Today we're going to learn a shortcut method of determining a remainder without having to go through the whole process of long division. And we call the shortcut method the remainder theorem. Okay, let me just first explain what it means, what it is, and then we'll look at an example. So it's this is what it says. When we divide a polynomial f of x by x minus c, right, where c is just some constant, the remainder is f of c. So basically, it's what you get when you take positive c and substitute it into the function. All right, so let me explain through an example because that may be a little confusing. So let's say we have this function f of x, and we want to divide it by x minus 1. Now, I did that over here. Okay, I'm not going to go through the process, but when we divide f of x by x minus 1, we get a remainder of 6. Now, instead of going through that whole process of long division, what we could do instead is you can take, instead of dividing by x minus 1, we can take basically the 0 that goes along with this. We could take x equals positive 1, right, the opposite sign of what's here, and substitute it in for x. See how all these x's are replaced with a positive 1? And when you do, when you figure out what this is equal to, it's going to be equal to the remainder. See that? They match. Okay? So, again, instead of going through the whole process of long division, you can just substitute in x equals positive 1, and you will wind up with the same remainder. Okay, now let's take a look at a couple examples. All right, so I'm going to skip around a little. Let's start with number 15. So number 15, what is the remainder when f of x is divided by x plus 3? Okay, so rather than doing long division, to find the remainder, we can take x equals negative 3, right? If this is x plus 3, the 0 that would go along with that would be negative 3. We could take negative 3 and substitute it in for all the x's into this function. Okay, so what I did was I just replaced every x I saw with a negative 3. Oh, over here. And when you do, just make sure they go in parentheses, and it's the only thing that goes in the parentheses. Now, you can either, you could do one or two things. You can either figure this out by hand, right? Or if you want to use your calculator, I really um, recommend using the store button. Okay, so let me show you what I mean. So basically what we're going to do, let me just move this down. Since we're substituting in negative 3 for x, right, we're going to plug in our calculator. Let me move this up so you can see what I'm hitting. Negative 3. And then the store button is right here above the on. See, it's a stow store. And then we're going to hit X and hit Enter. So basically, whenever we type in an X, our calculator is going to, you know, think of it as a negative 3. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in what we see right here. 2X cubed plus 3X squared minus X plus 1. So 2X cubed plus 3x squared minus x plus 1. And when you hit enter, you'll see that the expression is equal to negative 23 when x is substituted with negative 3s. Okay, so we know that f of negative 3 is equal to negative 23. So I'm going to put that right here. So we answered letter A of this question, right? They wanted us to find the remainder. This would be the remainder if we had gone through the whole process of long division. Okay, now part B wants, to, wants us to explain, is x plus 3 a factor? Well, remember, if something is a factor, right, of f of x, it means it's going to divide evenly into it. And if it divides evenly into it, that means we would have no remainder, right? This would have to be equal to 0. So basically, x plus 3 is not a factor of f of x because... This right here doesn't equal 0 because f of negative 3 does not equal 0. Okay, so you're just going to put that into words, and that's exactly what I did. I mean, you know, I basically just restated the question, but I put the word not in there. So x plus 3 is not a factor of f of x because, and here's my reason, this right here doesn't equal 0. So I just said f of negative 3 does not equal 0. If this did equal 0, then it would be a factor. Okay, so let's take a look at number 16. So this wants to know, is x minus 1 a factor of this expression? Okay, so in order to determine that, we're going to use the remainder theorem. Rather than doing long division, we're going to plug 
positive one, right, the opposite sign of what's here, into this expression to see what it's equal to. If it's equal to zero, then it's a factor, right, because there's no remainder. If it's not equal to zero, then it's not a remainder. I'm sorry, it's not a factor because there's a remainder. Okay, so what I did was I replaced all the x's with negative ones. Okay, I just put them in parentheses. Now, you could figure this out by hand if you want. This is actually not a hard one to figure out by hand. Um, or if you want to do this, use the store button in your calculator and figure out what that's equal to, you can do that as well. But I just want to point out, if you decide to use the calculator, you still need to show this work on your paper. Okay, this is showing what you substituted in for x. Okay, I'm going to quickly go over how to do this in the calculator again, just to remind you. So basically what we're doing is we, we're storing x as positive 1. So you type in 1, and the store button is right here above on, and then we're going to hit the x and hit enter. So what you do is you told your calculator 1 store x. Anytime I hit an x, it's going to represent the number 1. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to plug this expression into our calculator. So 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 3x minus 2. And you're going to hit enter. So this is telling you when we substitute 1 in for all of these x's, the expression is equal to 0. Okay, so basically, this expression right here, when you substitute in 1, equals 0. Okay, now that's not our answer, right? The question wants to know, is x minus 1 a factor? Explain why or why not. Well, since this is equal to 0, since our expression equals 0 when we substitute in 1, it means that x minus 1 is a factor. Because if we had done long division, x minus 1 would divide evenly into this expression. Okay, so I'm writing out that x minus 1 is a factor of... Now, this time I can't just say f of x because they don't give us f of x, right? They don't call this f of x, g of x. They just give us an expression. So I actually need to write out the expression. Or I could say the expression. But x minus 1 is a factor of... And I wrote it out. Or you could say the expression. Please do not say the equation. Okay, this is not an equation because there's no equal sign. This is an expression. All right, so x minus 1 is a factor of 2x cubed plus 3x squared minus 3x minus 2 because when 1 is substituted for x, the expression equals 0. Okay, this explanation is a little lengthier than the one above because if they don't say f of x, we can't say, like, you know, f of 1. We have to actually say when 1 is substituted for the x. All right, so this is a little lengthier. So x minus 1 is a factor of this expression because when 1 is substituted for the x, the expression equals 0. Okay, we're going to take a look at a couple examples on the next few pages. So if you can turn to the next page, we're going to take a look at number 20. Okay, so in number 20, it says, when f of x is divided by x plus 2, the remainder is 8. All right, now let's think about what that means. When f of x is divided by x plus 2. So we know when we divide by x plus 2, right, the remainder theorem says we could substitute a negative 2 in for x. So this is telling us that when we do f of negative 2, okay, now it says the remainder is 8. Well, we know that f of negative 2 is going to be equal to the remainder. So since the remainder is 8, f of negative 2 equals 8. So that's going to be choice 4. That's just making sure you understand what the remainder theorem says. When you plug in basically the number that has the opposite sign of what we see here, it's going to be equal to the remainder. All right, let's take a look at number 22 on the next page. Okay, so number 22, given p of x equals this, which statement is true? Okay, now when I look at this, right, is a factor, is a factor, is a factor. We know that in order for something to be a factor, when we plug in a number, the expression has to be equal to 0. So it automatically has to be choice 3 or 4. I'm just going to eliminate choice 1 and choice 2. Okay, now let's read them. It says x minus 1 is a factor because p of 1 equals 0, or x plus 1 is a factor because p of 1 equals 0. All right, we don't actually have to find p of 1. We don't have to plug in 1 and determine that it's equal to 0 because these both say the same thing. 
All right, but let's think about it. If you plug in a positive one, wouldn't that tell us that x minus one is a factor, right? Doesn't this have to have the opposite sign of what we're substituting in? Okay, so choice three would be our answer. Okay, and now we're gonna actually skip two pages ahead and take a look at number 27, and that's the last one we're gonna do together today. Okay, so now if we take a look at 27, this time they give us a graph, right? They give us a picture, not an equation. All right, and it says in part A, what is the remainder when f of x is divided by x plus three? All right, so if we wanna find the remainder when we divide by x plus three, we know what we're actually looking for here is f of negative three, right? We wanna look at the opposite sign. All right, so this is just an x value, right? x equals negative three. Let's go to when x equals negative three. It's right here, okay? And you could see the coordinates at that point would be negative three, zero. So if we wanna know what is f of negative three, what is the y value when x is negative three? The y value right here is zero. So that would be our remainder. If we came up with this equation, right? If we made an equation for this graph and substituted in negative three, for x, the value of the function would be at y equals zero right here. Okay, so zero would be the remainder. All right, the next one, part b, wants to know what is the remainder when f of x is divided by x minus two. So what we're doing is we're trying to find f of positive two. Okay, so if we want to find f of positive two, let's go to the graph when x equals two. Okay, right here. We could see the coordinates of this point are two, zero. So again, our remainder is gonna be zero. The remainder is equal, the remainder is what the function is equal to at that x value. So at this x value of two, the function is equal to zero. So again, we'd have a remainder of zero, which means that both of these, x plus three and x minus two would be factors of the function, okay? Because the remainder equals zero. Okay, let us see. What is the remainder when f of x is divided by x minus 1? Okay, so this time we're looking for f of positive 1. Okay, we're changing the sign to a positive 1. So let's go to the graph. When x equals 1, the function's actually all the way up here. So let me put a point there. And you could see the coordinates of this point are at 1, 8. So since f of 1 is equal to 8, right, 8 is the y value of the function when x equals 1, 8 would be our remainder if we divided by x minus 1. Okay, now letter D, what is the remainder when f of x is divided by x? Now, hmm, x, we have to kind of think about it as x plus or minus a number. Isn't x the same thing as x minus 0 or x plus 0? So really what we're doing is we're looking, what we're looking for is f of zero, okay? We're taking a zero and plugging it in for x. All right, so let's go over here to when x is zero. The graph is all the way up here at a height of six, okay? So the coordinates of that point would be zero, six. So f of zero is equal to six because that's the y value at that point. So if we wanted to know the remainder, the remainder would just be six.